Welcome to the Miss Francois Show, where we have candid conversation and a variety of entertainment. But today we're going to stop at the entertainment because I'm going to interview two young, beautiful ladies because they were in a documentary called The Art of Whining. I mean, one of them look a little drunk, but whining is not that kind of wine, okay? So today, even though I'm the only one dressed in Trinidad and Tobago attire, because last time I checked whining was out of Trinidad and Tobago, but none of them. Come dress, making me look crazy. But let me introduce you to our two amazing, beautiful guests. We have LaShawn Prescott and we have Miss Ula. I can't pronounce her last name. She could tell us, tell us her last name whenever, but me not interested. All you need to know is me because multi-talented and super sexy. So hi, Ola. Hi, LaShawn. Hi. Nice to see you. Nice to meet you. Hi, pleasure to be here. I know. Because you get to look, just, just look at me and you'll feel very comfortable. Yes. <laughs> so let me tell you a little about Ola. Basically, Ola is a dancehall queen from Poland. She, she won basically almost every com competition. It seemed like she just whining all over Jamaica, whining all over Europe, because she could whine. Okay? So any competition she been in, and she has actually won a few of those competitions. Right? So that's Ola, Miss Whining Queen. We have Miss LaShawn. She could whine too, you know. <laughs> also artistic director from L Infinity Studios and assistant professor of modern and contemporary dance in UTT. What's UTT stand for, LaShawn? University of Trinidad and Tobago. You see, Trinidad has schools. All they thought we didn't have no schools, right? Anyway, this particular documentary is called Art of Whining and it was produced and directed by the Seven Traveler, AKA, AKA Andrew Joseph, as he likes to say. But we're gonna start because I want other people to know exactly what whining is, because a lot of people have no clue what it is. So the first question I want to direct is to LaShawn. LaShawn, if you have to tell someone about whining and they never heard about whining, they have no clue what it is. Explain what whining is, LaShawn. So I would say the, the scientific explanation is that whining is the circumduction of the hips. So it's where the hips are moving, you know, you know it's, and there are different ways, of course, but it really comes down to that. It's the movement of the hips, the movement of the body. Um, it's been particularly associated with soca music. Um, we, we got whining in the Caribbean, we've been, you know, colonized from different places. So Af Africans came down um, and we've been influenced. You know what I can't understand? I asked LaShawn one question. She going, giving me the whole history. Uh, did I ask? She, so she reading the, the questions that I have, right? She reading them. So LaShawn, whining is the moving the circum, what? Circumduction of the hips. Okay. Now, if I never hear about whining, I don't know what the hell that means. Okay, so you must know she's a professor. Ola, I've given you the same question. Can you break it down to someone from Poland? I, do, I didn't even know people in Poland know what whining is. I don't even know they know Trinidad even exists. What is whining to someone that have never heard about whining? Ola. Uh, I don't know if there's something to add more, but it's like move of your hips and waistline, which is going in a circle way. Like, you know, you're moving your hips. And Thank waist. you, Ola. The professor up there wanted to give me some long. I can't even spell the word she was talking about. So in a circular motion, you're moving your hips. Thank you, Ola. The girl from Poland, okay, the Trinidadian who whining come from couldn't answer the question, but it's okay. So in this documentary, one of the things, because we had six Pe people that, that was interviewed for this documentary and we have two of you here. So one of the things was the, it started with someone named Mindy Giles, I believe, and she was talking about the ancestry of the music and where it come from. So LaShawn, since you couldn't answer the first question, can you tell me where does whining come from? Um, yeah, it's Mindy Giles, really. Uh, Mindy. Mindy spoke in a documentary about the whining coming from Africa. Um, and it's really, it was influenced from, you know, a lot of the dances like bongo dances and rituals where it's done almost in a way to encourage copulation. Um, so that, that was the origins. 
but along the way you've seen it develop into something else so along the way and over time it's become a way where it doesn't necessarily have to be something sexual it could be something that's just you know your wine and it's just part of the festivity and part of enjoying yourself and stuff and it doesn't necessarily mean i'm trying to take you home keeping it short. as always lashon just lying on this duck lying okay first of all if anybody put on any video of ola whining it looked like she having sex so i don't know what you're talking about it's very sexual so even though it came from our ancestries and africa and certain things like that trinidad just take it and do something else ola whining right from is you've been to several islands and you do a lot of whining in europe is there a difference between when you go to like Jamaica or Trinidad? Is there a difference in the whining? Um, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, I see the differences. For example, in, in Jamaica, it's a little bit more wild and you'll get also some daggering and crazy stuff you are doing. It's, it, it's all wild thing. And when I came to Trinidad, I feel more, you know, femininity and like female power and just smooth moves and groovy soca. So it's a little bit different, but you can find like the same part in both whining. So yeah. Thank you, Ola. I like you, you know. Let me let me just delete the show and right here out of this. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's just because my English is not so very well. So no, I your English is short perfect. like this. <laughs> No, it's perfect. It's them Trinidadians, girl. They could talk and talk and talk. They, oh, Lord, goodness gracious. So one thing I want to ask you, LaShawn, right? In, in the documentary, they interviewed Mr. Austin Lyons, which I would like to mention that he won the road match title for 10 times and International Soka Monarch title seven times. So he is huge when it comes to carnival soca music whining he is basically the person everyone knows when it comes to that jumping and waving and whining so with that said right if he had mentioned whining mostly started a lot in carnival 80s and up when he entered so what LaShawn were they doing before the 80s when it was on the streets during carnival time i mean well okay so so come music really um started around 1970, 72, 74 there. Um, and around Carnival time is because it's a parade on the streets. So you'll see people, they'll be like what we call chipping, going on the road, they kind of see a step, step, but the hips are going on the side. And then eventually because of the, you know, performances and, you know, all these soca parties going around, you see that being influenced onto the Carnival road as well. Um, but I feel like even on Carnival time, you still have that race movement going on the streets. You see it all the time. And even some people say, some people say, you see little kids doing it. And they say, but how do you like to lie like that? You know? <laughs> it's in our blood. So that's how you always talk to your kids in Trinidad. Good to know, LaShawn. <laughs> um, Ola, do not bring your kids when you have kids too. Trinidad. Okay? I will bring it for sure. I will bring it for sure. Like. Well, don't leave them by LaShawn. <laughs> so let me ask you, Ola. A lot of people, as soon as they click on this, they're like, well, this white girl, she can't whine. What she know about whining? So you in Poland, how did you even come in to start whining? Thank you for this compliment, <laughs> first of all. <laughs> um, I don't know, but it was always like something natural for me. Even when I was four years old, my first memory from the childhood is whining to Lambada from Brazil, Bolivian. Uh, you know, thing. And I always feel like this, even when I was dancing other styles, I was trying to do something with my hips and when my waistline. Uh, and when I just saw some videos from Trinidad and some videos from Jamaica, girls doing their things, I was trying just, you know, teach myself and do the same thing. Like, But I think it was something was always in my inside of me. Like I got, like I'm Polish, but I got Caribbean soul, I guess. I hope so. <laughs> no, well said. I am a little disturbed at four that you were dancing to that kind of music. I need to speak to your parents immediately, but it's okay. <laughs> You're of age now. So with that said, when I see whining, it looks like a lot of work. 
it, it looked tiresome to be honest because compared to Jamaica music where you could just lean up on a wall and just whine for 20 minutes sometimes the music has so much energy with soca what is the main areas because a lot of people do it as exercise now so what is the main areas that people actually feel feel it in when they're whining since it's also good as an exercise yeah definitely when you're whining you're definitely going to be working your core working your abdominals your lower back but you're also going to be working your quads your hamstrings your glutes you know um and a lot of people don't realize that it's actually going to give you that type of full body workout and depending on what wine to do your wine you're going down low you're working your quads there you know you're doing those kind of snake wines that we must do your work in your back there so Really so since you, since you were mentioned the different that's one of the things I wanted to also ask you was mentioning that they have many different kinds of wine so between both of you all mention some wines because I'm thinking how much wine could it possibly have your you turn your circumference whatever you say Lashan but what name a wine Ola what's a type of wine uh, you get, for example, that fast wine, which uh, also called half wine. Uh, in dance hall, you get like Egyptian wine, which is not like circle, but like snake move or something like this. So you get a lot of kind of wine. You can do it. So, and Lashon, what different what different kinds of wine also you could add to that? I mean, so she mentioned the fast wine, and they have this slow wine. Mm -hmm. um, it, Masha has a song about that slow wine. You have the joke. It have stuff like the, the TikTok now. Um, you know, they have the trimble. They have stuff with like the figure of eight kind of things. They have so many different versions. You know what I love? But every time LaShawn is talking about wine, and she moving some part of she body. <laughs> <laughs> but at least you you're all into the wine okay so with that said we're going to take a short break i'm going to show you all a few clips of these different kinds of wine you can see the white girl oh look at the wine okay she's trinidad by in heart and spirit yeah. okay even though she's from poland and uh, lashon is going to show us a few things because you know she's showing people how to dance so she better know how to do something or show somebody something so come on right back Make me see you bend on your back. Bend over. Make me see you bend on your back. Oh, what you want is walk. What you need is walk. What you want is walk. What you need is walk. Walk.
Now we're back here with LaShawn and Ola. And we're talking about the documentary Art of Whining. So again, it's nothing to get you drunk, but it's something that was from our ancestors back in Africa and we, we brought it to the Caribbean. And as what what did you say, LaShawn? Is the what? Circumduction. Circumduction. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Movement of the hips. <laughs> Movement of the hips, okay? So a, a lot of people in the Caribbean do it, but Trinidad is definitely known for it, especially during so for soca and during carnival time. If you have not been to a Trinidad carnival, shame on you. With that said, you had said something in the documentary, LaShawn, say, <laughs> teeth are wine. Explain what teeth are wine is. <laughs> okay, so, you know, people, you're, you're on the streets in the carnival parade and you're whining. Maybe a woman is whining by herself or a guy is whining by himself. See, for wine is when you come, you sneak up probably by the person and you try to whine with them, you know? Your teeth for the wine. Take a little wine with the person and then go away. So you know that happened in America. Somebody might get a bus head <laughs> and end up in the hospital. I just want to make sure. So maybe I'll keep that in the islands because I don't think America is ready for anybody to teep anything, especially a wine on someone else's woman. But that's something they do. Everybody take a wine and they, they, they yeah. right? They take a wine and they go away and nothing serious. And I just you take a little wine and control context. Control context. So, Ola, since you like to move your waist in all kind of circumference and all kind of stuff, right? Is <laughs> it doesn't matter the direction of the wine? Like, does it matter if it's count? Let me talk like LaShawn. Counterclockwise or clockwise? No, it doesn't matter. It's like of course, it's very nice if you can do it both ways, but you can do it whatever you want it. Like you can do it like clockwise or other way. Other way, it's it's okay. Like and like because <laughs> it's normally however someone feels comfortable. Or it, it, so because a lot of time if you're teaching someone to wine, do you tell them? Do you actually say go to the left or go to the right, or is wherever they feel comfortable? If I am uh, practicing with my crew that crew that we are taking part in competition and everything need to lead, uh, look sharp and the same yes i'm saying like you need to do it like left side or right side but right. on my classes now i just want uh, want them to feel comfortable and do like them things and just feel happy and just you know joy that classes so it doesn't matter there Okay, so she don't really care. Wine right, wine left. Just make sure you're whining when you go to Ola's yes. class, right? One, okay, so I like to go back and forth about the documentary. It mentioned yeah, during Juve time, that's when it, it really came about, right? But no, so one of my main things for even doing this interview about the art of whining is to bring attention to certain things that people never heard about. So LaShawn, what is Juve? Juve is really like coming of the dawn. So it happens, um, it's like the beginning of carnival. So carnival Monday starts maybe like 2 a.m. in the morning and it's people go out there in oil, paint, mud, um, powder, they sometimes my head steel band, music, and it's like the beginning of carnival. It's okay. it just sound like people get up and they don't bed and they dirty themselves up to come in the streets. Is that what you're telling everyone? No, it's it's a beautiful thing to, to behold. It's like, you know, it's deep. It's, you have to my <laughs> it's my favorite part of the carnival. That's, a, that's what I wanted to know. So, Ola, have you participated in Juve? Yes, it's my favorite part of the carnival. Like, it's favorite one. Like, uh, they do it not to put on makeup. You don't have to do it here. You just come out with oil and... You don't yes. have to say nothing, right? Yes. Beating <laughs> down on you. Huh? And no sun beating down on you. Okay. <laughs> oh, so this is one thing I always check when people are whining. Do women whine better than men? Or do men whine better? Because somebody had to be doing it better. But I've seen some training men, they were whining. Oh, some training I don't men. think there's a rule like this. Like... I saw great dancers like male dancers or female dancers, so it doesn't so matter. Trying to say men, so you trying to say it don't matter. So women, you are supposed to have woman power. Is a three women on this panel? You supposed to say women could whine better than men. So you think anybody could whine? It doesn't really matter. Of course, of course. Okay, like how to delete she off my? 
<laughs> but when feel more comfortable whining, I feel like you know people associated with a certain thing. They think typically the woman are what the one supposed to induce and entice the man. Um, so traditionally, it's been like that. But listen, these days you're seeing some men they whining better than the woman in all. Hello. <laughs> And I need some guys in Poland to whine because I know only maybe three guys who can whine in Poland, in whole country, <laughs> whole country. Okay. Can you imagine? Well, they, they need to take more of your classes, Ola. That's why. You have to take that as a challenge. Get them in. To yeah. <laughs> Yes. So again, I just want to remind people we're talking about the art of whining that was produced and directed by Andrew Joseph under the banner, The Seven Travelers. So we can't, even though we had snippets of whining, I can't have you all on my show and somebody not show me some kind of wine. So we're going to take a second out, have LaShawn show me a little something because I, I can't have a whole documentary say art of whining and she's not whining, right? So LaShawn, this is your time to shine, my dear. <laughs> It's just a wine, just a little wine. Ain't no harm in that, right? Cause we having a good time. We everybody. Wine up somebody now. Take a wine, everybody. Wine up somebody now. A little wine never hurt nobody. I know she must have to breathe up. Breathe, breathe, eh? You okay? <laughs> yeah, you know, that was fully correct. Oh, oh my girl, that was well put together like you was planning this. <laughs> no, actually, that was improv. <laughs> <laughs> That's skills. So this is why you have to be taking classes with LaShawn and Ola because not any and anybody could just break that out, okay? I always say I do social wine. It's just a side to side and just a tiny move and then I look like I'm going to go down, but then I can't. But... LaShawn did that, that was beautiful, okay? A jealous girl. I feel like I'm not even Trinidadian. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me, ask, let me ask this question, right? I know now, I see a lot of people doing it, whining as exercise and so forth and so on. But a lot of people would say that that's not the way to go because it's too sexy and it's too vulgar. What would you say to those people that just think that, because I've seen some whining on the streets of Trinidad and Tobago. So when people are saying it's too sexy, so vulgar, they should go back to maybe chipping. Like, what would you say to those people? I think different people have different value systems. Um, some people are open, some people are a little bit more close-minded. The whining doesn't have to be something sexy. Well, it could literally be you're doing that for a workout, you know? Um, so I'm actually going to bring this example. When... People used to see pole dancing as taboo because they used to associate pole dancing with, you know, strippers and stuff. And then now pole dancing is a sport. And you can go to a pole class and you can take a pole class to work out. And I think that's the same direction we're getting going with whining. It started as, you know, it's a sexual thing, but now it's people acknowledge and appreciate the fact that it's a workout and they can appreciate it just for that. Oh, well said. I <laughs> Yes. Perfect answer. I didn't have to push. Oh my God. Thank you so much. So it doesn't have to be always sexy and you don't have to open your leg all, but it's different kinds of wine and it's how you choose to see it. And I know a lot of people say it's an expression of, you know, expressing yourself, so forth and so on. I mean, some people just want to be slutting it all over the place, but we're not talking about those people, right? So with that, one of the things is all of you teach classes, for instance, LaShawn, you do the same thing. But some people, like Ola, right? How Some people be like, you got to teach somebody to whine. Like, for instance, if you're Trinidadian, isn't that something normal to do? Or how do you teach someone to whine? That's supposed to be something just simple. So how are you teaching somebody to whine? Like, um, like you said, they have different wines, but what are you teaching? Shouldn't that just be natural as a Trinidadian? LaShawn, for instance, shouldn't that be something... A lot of people say that, and I got that especially in 
you know, people say, why am I coming to a class? But a lot of people don't understand the mechanics behind it. They, and you know, you come to a class and they break it down. Okay, you go, it's an isolation of the hips. This is what you do. You're gonna show them how the body moves and then let them get their own interpretation into it. You know? So um, I do think that there's a lot to learn in it. And then the way that we structure the class is really about getting our workout as, as well. So we have a warm up, we break down the stuff and you know, that's true, yeah. So also, how, how, how yeah. long have you been teaching? Because you mentioned you teach teach classes. So how long? My first class, but it, it wasn't like soccer class or dance hall class was when I was 18 years old. But um, like a professional classes is for 10 years now, I guess. Yeah. So like, 10 years you've been teaching professionally. You're just whining all over the place, right? So yes. I'm thinking with all just like LaShawn said and you agree that it's a, a lot of exercise how long you think you're going to be doing this for so you're going to have the cane coming out to wine with your cane or what's the plan for the future um i really want to do this as long as i can so if i feel good and i see people coming to my classes because yeah i think even i was i'm teaching teaching even more than 10 years, maybe 12 years, something like this. And people still want to come to my classes and my workshops because I think it's also because I am educating myself and going to the island and just, you know, try to show them something new. Uh, so I want to do it like as much as I can. Mm, and then I don't know, it's this time, like in this pandemic and everything, you can't plan nothing. <laughs> sure. So I'm just going with the flow and we will see what happens. But for sure, I'm going to connect my life with Caribbean culture because I'm also organizing some events, Caribbean events here in Poland. So it's not only dancing scene. Okay, I let her talk longer because she's a foreigner. I didn't want to scream at her. So <laughs> thank you so much, Ola. With that, Sam, I just want to remind everyone, definitely check out The Art of Wine and Produce and yeah. directed by The Seven Traveler, a.k.a. Andrew Joseph. That means he better be able to put on some wine if he having a whole documentary on art of whining. Mm -hmm. But with that said, LaShawn, tell us where, if people want to reach out to you, connect with you on social media, where exactly can they go and click and follow and like? All my social media handles are at LaShawn Prescott. I think my name, they'll see it down at the bottom. So it's yes, because I'm going to put it down, but people are not too smart and they ain't going to remember. L-A-S-H-A-U-N-P-R-E-S-C-O-T-T -T, and of course L-Infinity. It's E-L-L-E-I-N-F-I-N-I-T-T. -T. Yeah, Professor, she had to spell everything. I just tell the girl I'll put it at the bottom so people could see it, but she want to spell. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Hola, my dear. Where can people reach out? Because people go want to see these sexy white girl whining Trinidad style, Jamaican style. So where can they reach you, Hola? Uh, so yeah, my Instagram is dhqafro because it's my nickname from dancehall queen scene uh, and i also got a comfy body um, profile which promote caribbean culture and some caribbean dances so yeah you can check it so don't worry i'm also gonna put her information at the bottom so she didn't have to spell it yes thank you <laughs> <laughs> with that said you could always check out the miss francois show on all social media remember Miss Franco always say exactly what you're thinking. Tell everyone bye. Don't forget to check out the other whining. Wave LaShawn, wave Ola. Bye.